You're still watching Way, so we're just going to go straight to what we found in the news. I'm coming to you in Kechi, baby. <laughs> what did you find for us in the news? So in Vanga today, um, NIMSI staff um, threatened to strike again, and they are issuing the federal government 21-day ultimatum. So um, they're actually really upset because they went on a two-day strike the last time, and till now, I think what they were demanding for, the federal government has still not done anything about it. And they complained that um, because the government gave its citizen um, a deadline to actually register their NIN, the centers have been filled up to the brim. Mm. And due to that, the COVID situation has actually increased because a lot of the um, staff, staff caught, caught COVID. Now, what they're saying is af after everything, they decided to end the two-day strike because they saw that the citizens were also suffering. So they were like, okay, you know what? We have placed a demand. We want you guys to also um, put our health into consideration. Apparently, what the federal government did, they told them that they have provided them with mask and face shield. Now, they didn't bring it to the organization. They told them to come pick it up. Hmm. So they are really upset with the fact that, first of all, we don't really earn a lot. Our life is at stake here, and you still want us to spend money to come to you <laughs> to pick it up. So they're actually upset about a lot of things. And coupled with the fact that um, JAM will be coming up very soon. Now, they are, the gov government is telling the students, before you can register for you JAM, have have you have need. to have, you, your need is, is very, very mm -hmm. compulsory. So there are a lot of things at stake at the moment. So they had to increase the ultimatum. You know what, let's give it 21 days. For now, we'll be working. After that 21 days, over. They won't be able to do anything for you. I took the story last week, and you know, um, and it's so it's so sad that you know the government is not taking it seriously, and that's why sometimes when you see that the citizens are not serious with COVID, you wonder why. You can't wonder, because if the government is not taking it seriously, you know that COVID does exist, and if you are put put um, putting ultimatums for people to go and get their NIN. You're also putting a lot of strain on the on the staff, on the staff of the the NIMSI, you know. So a lot of them caught the COVID till today. There are no compensations for them. I've not heard the government say, okay, for the people that are sick and all of that, and the people that have um, uh, they have contracted the the COVID. This is the measure that they are putting well, in place. Yeah. Nothing. This is so so much. So it's even beyond face bills. face shield it's and nose mask. It's actually it's beyond, beyond that. that because they also for, demanded yeah, exactly. for. For the, the offices to be fumiga uh, being fumigated, but I think it's supposed to be like um, sanitized or something. Not so for those that are already sick, what are you doing to help them? Hmm. You can't tell me, I'm coming to work every day, and I, am, I think right now they're actually overworking. It's actually a lot of work. Now look at what Tammy said. She got there and they do a lot of people. So imagine the number of people they have to attend to. Normally they can be really slow because I've been there. See, but then this thing is annoying like why can't we just find a, a digital solution to this problem for goodness sake must we even visit you say there's covid do you need to visit the office physically can't we find a, a tech solution that can solve this problem you are arresting people who are going to clubs all well and good i don't have a problem with that for no, those that, that are that are in their workplace in fact the covid is coming to meet them hmm. you're supposed to actually protect, protect these them. people yeah. so what are you doing about it it's really not fair to it's be honest sad. tell but, me Liz, what did you find for us in the news? <laughs> okay, so my, my story is different, but can I just say something yeah, about her story? Go ahead. My, okay, so this morning, I got notification from someone, it was in the news, that we could go online. If you have your BVN already, it would be easy to, you know, to just do your NIN from your home, and that would be really easy. And I was on the website, and it still, the website still reads, that I should go with my BVN and all that data to the NIN office. And I was hoping, I was so joyful when I saw it that, no, you could do it if you already have your BVN details. But turns out that you still have to go, at least from what's on the website, you still have to go to the Everybody NIN Everybody that has tried to really register sad. this thing My online. own story is... It doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't sorry, work. Tammy, I was going to say that work. everybody that has attempted to register this thing online, even the ones that successfully did the, the data, I was watching a, a report on, um, on a sister station. She took the slip, printed it out. By the time she got there, she had to restart it from beginning. From beginning. So what's the point? It doesn't work. Please, let's hear your story. All right, so my story is about COVID-19 stalling Lagos-Ibadan rail inauguration. So the rail inauguration was supposed to be this week. 
Mm. And the Minister of Transport has said that because of the COVID-19 challenge, it, it has you know affected it. And he also disclosed that about over 60 staff of the project site, you know, speaking about people being affected, they had actually been infected by COVID while they were trying to complete this project, this rail inauguration project. Another thing that caught my attention in the story is when he mentioned that the um, Kaduna Abuja rail, he was saying that even for this Lagos Ibadan win, if they find that people are not observing the COVID protocols, they would have to stop the train from running if they find that. Because he mentioned that even in the Kaduna Abuja one, if people don't comply with COVID protocol, they would have to stop the train from running because it conveys about 4,000 passengers daily. And that's an easy way for COVID to easily be transmitted. So I saw that I was really happy about Lagos Ibadan Rail. I was thinking about going through that route when I'm going back to Lagos, just taking the rail and just enjoying it. And then I read this news about how that if people don't comply with the COVID-19 protocols, then they would have to stop the train from moving. And, and that's, uh, that's disheartening. I can only picture how do you, <laughs> you know how you see those, those trains in <laughs> India. <laughs> no. Well, it's so interesting. Well, I hope they comply. I hope they comply. You know, I went to drop my kids in school on Saturday, um, Ocean State. Mm. And honestly speaking, I looked at the roads. This thing is not rocket science. We, do, we can't afford not to have proper rail network, network in this country that connects Lagos to other parts of, you know, especially neighboring states. Mm -hmm. It just makes life easy, you know. So it's just, the roads <laughs> it's just are really interesting. bad. Really, really bad. And ah, the truth is, with me? how bad the roads are, armed robbers are seeing it or using it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to actually perpetrate evil. Hmm. Once you get to a pothole, you actually have to slow down. Definitely. So they use that opportunity to ambush you. Normally, we would have left probably like 5 a.m., but we had to stall to like 6.30 a.m. because it's not good for you to leave too early. Too early. we took through Epe. Oh. So went through the Epe route, you know. So it was, it was not... That uh, road is not safe at all. It's not safe it's for not you safe. to leave too early, you know. But it was, it was not a bad road, honestly. And the Ogun State government, funny enough, they are doing some construction. Ambody did a lot. I have never gone through that Epe road mm -hmm. up until Saturday. Ambody did a lot. I didn't know that he did so much. So he much. built a city in his, <laughs> in <Ekwe. laughs> you know, but I'm just wondering why didn't he connect it well from so. the Lagos side, you know, <laughs> but it was interesting though. So my story is but quite you know funny. What's so painful about the entire thing? What did you say? You know how Jennifer, what, what's so painful is that, you know, in her story, Jennifer mentioned that some of the NIN staff, you know, were infected by COVID. Yeah. And now again, we read the story that those who are working on the real project some of them, about over 60, have been infected by COVID. Well. And it's just so painful that those people were in the line of duties. And I really hope that they are compensated. Absolutely. It's, it's so really some sad. people that did not have what to do, they called on, they are asking our president. <laughs> this story is so funny. I will just mention it and go to the brain because I'm not even interested in talking. They have called, asked, Buhari asked to place travel ban on Trump. <laughs> like I can't even, I can't hold the laughter. So some group of people, let me see, a group of Muslim right concern made um, the demand in a statement by its director, hmm? Professor Ishak Akintola, titled, Please Travel Ban on Trump, based on the, the uh, what's it called, the capital um, um, riot that happened. Biko, who told you that Trump wants to come to your country? What is he coming to Nigeria to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. Maybe he's coming to seek asylum. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the when I saw the when I saw the news, I said, ah, you people don't have work to do. You've not called your president to help us fight insecurity, to help us curb banditry, to help us curb what's it called? Kidnapping, to help us all the problems that we have in this Trump. country. It's Trump. It is Trump that you now want to call your president that you should to place a travel ban. And they're also asking that if we do it as um, as Nigeria, other African countries will follow. So please, who told you that Trump is interested in coming to any shores of Africa? I thought they loved Trump. Please. <laughs> I just thought to mention that because I found it rather funny. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about the future of workspace. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 